This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB Plus, and on your smart speaker. Claudia Liza on Talk Radio. An unacceptable level of COVID cases means ministers should trigger their plan B for the pandemic in England now, uh, the British Medical Association. Acting quickly would reduce the need for more stringent, disruptive and longer lasting measures. Sage. There is absolutely nothing to indicate the country will enter a new lockdown this winter. Boris Johnson. Who's right? Uh, let's let's head to our Friday night panel. Uh, joining me is uh, Jason Reed and Ingrid Tarrant. Uh, good to have you tonight. Yeah, uh, where do we start? Uh, Ingrid, Boris Johnson just flat right, flat out shutting down <laughs> pretty much the medical community and scientific community. Uh, who do you think's right? Uh, well, um, what I have judged most things by is by the JVCI. And they originally said that children shouldn't be vaccinated and they ignored, they I mean Boris, the government, SAGE, all that lot. Um, they ignored that advice and said, right, we are going to jab all these children. Now the JVCI are saying, yes, we should be sort of like vaccinated and do the booster thing. And it's suggesting that if people don't, then we go into um, another lockdown. But he's going to wait till after half term. Um, I've... I am so fed up with this. And truthfully, if there is another lockdown, I'm going to ignore it. Mm -hmm. I really am. I just have, you know, I don't think I'm going to be the only one that's going to rebel against it. I think people are fed up with it. It's ruining people's lives psychologically as well. Old people, it, it could be last Christmases amongst families with elderly relatives and so on and so on. Um, it's it's wrong. There's no real evidence. Okay, so the cases have hit the 50,000. That's cases. That's not deaths. And we are testing much more than any other country in Europe. So, of course, we're bound to find, you know, you look for it hard enough, you're going to find that people have got strains of it. They're not dying from it in the, in the numbers that they were before. So the whole thing is a nonsense. It, it's illogical as far as I can make out. Jason, well, Jason, what do you think? Is it right Boris Johnson pushes back at calls to introduce some forms of restrictions right now? I think at the heart of this is an issue of trust. If it was the case that uh, by implementing some lighter restrictions now, mask mandates and that kind of thing, that we really could save Christmas and we could negate the need for another lockdown and we could trust that the government would then say, OK, we'll stick to our plan and we'll stick to what we promised you, then that would be one thing. But we're a long way from that. This feels like a flashback to last year. Something very, very similar happened where Boris said this is just one last push to save Christmas. And then, of course, Christmas was not saved, as he said earlier. We were, we were in tier four in England uh, when Christmas came around. Um, I feel almost like I'm, I'm being gaslighted a little bit. Am I the only one who remembers what Christmas was like last year or what lockdown no, was Jason, like? No, Jason, you it's are awful. not. You are not. The word is trust. And I don't trust this government or Boris at all, full stop. So if you if you don't trust Boris Johnson, is why do you trust him when he says that it's the right thing to do to not introduce the restrictions? Because but you also you, say if he does, you're not going to uh, listen, you're not going to follow them. He's, he's not saying that absolutely, though, is no, he? No, not absolutely, but it look, but he's not taking advice for, for introducing them now. He says he's going to watch and see what happens. Sajid Javid saying they're going to wait till we reach 100,000 cases. But much of the scientific and medical community saying, don't wait, do it now. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, one minute they, they listen to the JVCI, the next minute they don't. It's almost, it's, it's kind of what suits their agenda. But the thing is, we don't know what their agenda is. And we don't, and the promises that are made are broken, like they were last year with with Christmas. And then it's blamed. I mean, the children will get blamed now because they aren't taking up the vaccine in the numbers that they hoped that they would. I think the whole thing is so wrong. It's just, it's all smoke and mirrors. We're being, we're all confused. We just don't know. I've I've even forgot what Plan A is. <laughs> You don't want to hear what Plan C is, that's for sure, <laughs> Ingrid, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> Jason, Jason do, you, do you feel the government is, is getting it wrong here? You're saying you feel like you're, they're, they're gaslighting you. Why is that? 
Well, the, the danger here is that we're going to have, like I said, a repeat of last year where Boris Johnson keeps kicking the can down the road mm. and then eventually gives in to the pressure at the very last minute, probably on Christmas Eve with the, <laughs> with the timeline that we're in at the moment. Uh, the, the problem is that last year we effectively gave consent as a nation to temporarily go into lockdown on the grounds that this was a once in a lifetime, once in a generation, extreme temporary measure to, uh, to offset the, the pandemic in the very early stages. Three weeks to flatten the curve, do you remember that? And now here we are, what, 18 months later, talking about whether we are gonna be allowed to live our normal lives at Christmas or not. If we can't have a normal Christmas this year, that means we can't have a normal Christmas ever again, because it doesn't look to me like That's many people- like. We can't set a precedent like that at all. Mm. So you think, be, um, so Jason, it's it's right not to introduce these restrictions right now. Is that what you're saying? Or ever? Well, I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know whether the light restrictions are actually necessary, but if they are, I'd rather we had them now. I'd rather Boris just um, plucked up the courage to introduce mask mandates, if that would make a difference now for a few weeks so that we can actually save mm -hmm. Christmas. My concern is that he's just going to do his usual thing of leaving it to the very last minute and leaving it to a situation where then we actually really do need restrictions. And then that, of course, happens to be at Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that ridiculous situation there where, you know, Granny's sat in the garden on Christmas Day and we have to oh, no, get a Christmas horrible. dinner to her on a series of That pulleys. was really, really horrible. Oh, gosh. Last year, you can understand it, but this was so new, nobody knew what to and do. And there was no vaccine. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. but now we've had all this time to work out. We've seen how it's behaving, what's happening. We've seen the, the figures. Okay, they're going up, as I said, but you know earlier, sort of like we are testing at an alarming rate. So, therefore, of course, you're going to find, um, you know, huge numbers. But the deaths aren't that high. So we we've got a very good picture. We, the whole world, has a very much clearer picture of how this virus is behaving, and how it can be handled, how it can be controlled. Um, and a lot of it is largely being sensible, like you wouldn't go out with a, a, a horrible, ghastly seasonal flu. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's no justification whatsoever. I don't, I, I just can't see it. So Ingrid, what, there are a couple of concerns that uh, some scientists and some doctors have. Number one, this is, this is happening. We have COVID for the first time properly with flu. And we are in winter. We know winter is a terrible time for hospitals, a terrible time uh, for the NHS. Uh, the, the other issue is that if things don't improve, so right now things are getting worse slowly and, and you're, you're very right Ingrid it's, it's certainly not as bad as the dark days um, that we saw in last year in the beginning of this year in January but there's an issue with the booster jab it's not being rolled out as well as it should have been rolled out the push the drive just wasn't there and people just weren't taking it up uh, and even in schools you're right the government's just completely uh, overlooked overlooked some of the advice uh, of, of the committee looking into whether injections or vaccines should be given to children and said, no, we're going to do that. And that uptake hasn't been, uh, hasn't been going well as well. So with, because of all of this, we're going in the wrong direction. And the people that would lose out would be uh, doctors, nurses, those working for the NHS, those working in social care. So if indeed we don't introduce restrictions now, as Jason was saying, how would you feel if later on, getting closer to, to Christmas, we could see some of the restrictions we saw, not all of them, I'm really hoping, but some of the restrictions we saw this time last year. Well, I don't think restrictions could even come into it at all. I don't think now as a, um, or not now, and then it's a stay of execution. I don't think there should be any res restrictions full stop. But, uh, there's absolutely no need. The other thing that really um, bothers me, at this time of year, yes, we have the seasonal flu, and it's very similar to COVID. Now, unless you're actually properly tested, how do you know that that case is not just a bad case of seasonal flu or if it's COVID? Because then mm -hmm. you can start smudging the margins there as well. No restrictions. I don't think there should be any restrictions whatsoever. Not now, not later at all. I'm pretty sure, oh. Ingrid, many people are listening going here, here. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next debate, assisted dying. This is I've been covering assisted dying through throughout my my career, my time as a as a journalist. And this is the closest I've seen to it becoming a reality today. It was uh, debated in Parliament. It's passed uh, its first hurdle in the House of Lords, Jason. I, I'm in favour of um, of this bill passing. I think it would be a really good and overdue 
first step towards uh, giving people the right to dignity at the end of their lives. I think possibly one of the cruelest things you can do as a society is when someone is in such Im unimaginable pain to insist that they have to continue um, in, in that pain when they just want to be relieved from it. And we heard a lot of really moving statements mm. during the debate in the House of Lords today. Of course, the, the main one coming from uh, from Frank Field via, mm. via one of his colleagues in the Lords um, saying that he's changed his mind. Lots of other Lords as well, Ruth Davidson, one of them saying that they've changed their mind recently on this issue because they've heard moving testimonies from people saying how much of a difference it would make uh, to their welfare and to their happiness and so i think it's it's long overdue to make this move ingrid what do, what do you think about this bill because and jason was right i i, I had to listen to to some of the uh, the people who spoke and so moving so heartbreaking just understanding what what dying can be like for those of a terminal illness with, with those who want that dignity who are going through an awful amount of pain you can understand but for those just incredible voices really wanting the best for their loved ones you could also find those who might have other plans who whose heart is in a different place in the wrong place in terms of what they want from one of their members of their family passing away mm. well in other words that you that they may not want them to die they want to ha they want to cling to hope no they want they would want them to die to maybe but take advantage would, of them indeed if there yes indeed if there is yeah. a good inheritance to be had oh like that yes mm. i know well, the thing is, there'll be so many stages of um, of checking it through that there isn't um, an agenda. I was looking up um, all these things. There are 11 countries in the world um, where it is um, legal to um, euthanize people. Switzerland, Netherlands, Spain, Belgium, Luxembourg, Colombia, which is quite interesting because it's very Catholic. Um, mm. And it's the first Latin American country to decriminalize it in 1997. So that's quite a, a while ago. Canada, Australia, various states in Australia, various states also in USA, uh, France and New Zealand. But the BMA was, is, um, um, it's kind of, um, uh, they haven't said anything for or against. They, they said that um, they, vote, they voted to adopt a neutral stance. Mm. In other words, they would neither support nor oppose any attempts to change the law. That's very encouraging in itself because it really kind of gives a, a, a clear road. But you know what I find um, quite sort of strange is that on the extreme end of the spectrum, you have... Uh, parents who have very, very ill children and the courts then intervene and they take them off the life support system against the will of the parents. Oh, yes, but that yeah. is the same sort of thing that they are making a, a, a legal judgment there. So why is it so wrong for a person or the family of a person who's desperately ill, okay. no hope of surviving, that that can't be just okay. law? well ingrid ingrid tarrant uh tv broadcaster and uh, jason reed political commentator gonna have to leave it there but so good talking to you as always uh, you are listening to claudia liza on talk radio